Greetings and welcome. Welcome to Clyde Branson's Masterclass on Floats. Um, already I've gone through, uh, if you've been following the series, of course, uh, I, I had um, first one was on wagglers, then sticks, then running water floats, then running water pole floats. Now we're on the still water pole floats. Now, uh, the best way to explain uh, the still water pole float, uh, if you've already watched the um, the river one, uh, I did briefly explain a little bit uh, the reasons why the aerodynamics are slightly different. Now, with a still water pole float, they develop slightly different, um, obviously, than running water floats. Uh, generally, uh, it's the benefits of, of the float working in the still water. Now, as I've already described, um, the basic designs are developed from a pear drop. And uh, as you see, um, sometimes they're called teardrops, but I, I call them pear drops. Um, the aerodynamics of this float is the tapering effect. As I've already mentioned, it allows a sharper taper of the body, which in turn becomes sensitive as the float is weighted down in the water. The broader base uh, of the float Right, is, um, is, which is being downmost, allows the balance and stability in the still water. And of course, from this shape, most still water pole floats are developed. Now, with materials these days, um, from, I don't know, from uh, carbon, glass, polystyrene, balsa wire, nylon, tungsten, and other space age compounds, pole floats are now uh, in the 21st century. And the poor fish have got no chance at all. Um, now, in my opinion, uh, the leaders in, in uh, float manufacturers were the French. Uh, some people may argue that, that, that you know, uh, maybe the Italians and, uh, and so on. But in my eyes, it was the French and they were the best in the world, uh, especially with still water uh, fishing and their developments, um, you know, with the still water pole float. And over the years, it's been an inspiration to me and, and most other great anglers in this country and abroad, you know. Uh, I remember swapping our British floats um, and our methods and techniques for pole uh, floats and pole methods and techniques. Uh, you know, and it's been easy for me, you know, being a world champion, you know, uh, obviously I, well, I went on the waggler and it opened many doors for me, you know, making many friends and acquaintances in the international scene, you know, and it's given me a great advantage, you know, over the years. And of course, uh, given me knowledge, which I'm passing on, you know, to, um, the angler now, the younger generation, you know, and anyone else who's interested. As I say, uh, all the knowledge, uh, I, I've written it down in my um, manual. I don't keep pushing it, but uh, it's there. Um, at the moment, it's 14.95, so you know, it's a cheap investment. Um, now, most still water pole floats uh, have a working capability, okay, and this is something I've got to try and stress. And, and how they perform in different conditions depends on the angler's knowledge, okay. The shotting pattern is very important, uh, as well as feeding. Now, all this combined with the positive metal attitude and determination can help you catch those extra fish. And who knows, perhaps you may be a world champion one day too. Okay, the first float I'm going to show you um, actually is not a pear-shaped float. <laughs> I know I'm contradicting myself, but um, this float I'm going to show you, uh, the reason um, I was a bit dubious about which uh, series to put in, whether to put it in the uh, running water or in the still water. Um, I put in the still water one because it, it, you can adapt it for both. Um, it's, it's what we call a dipper or a dibber float. Now, not like the commercials, but this is um, a basically a straightforward peacock with a long wire stem and a bristle on the top. It's a pretty basic float, but before all these, um, you know, aerodynamic shaped, pear shaped floats come on the scene, these were the floats that people used to use. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about this because Kevin Ashes, my all time hero, he used to use these all the time. And I remember uh, being next to him on the John Smith uh, match once, and he used one on the river to great effect. Um, what he done, he very light um, uh, shots down, dragging the bottom, and uh, he went on and uh, he won his section, and um, he may even got placed on He beat me next peg. But, uh, and I watched him, I had to go and watch him. But the highlight of this float was that Kevin Ashurst become world champion in, uh, 
in 1992 on the River Earn in Ireland and he used this float to great effect. Um, he was lifting it up uh, with using blood worm up in the water and dropping it constantly for three hours and uh, I was great to watch, I uh, uh, privilege to watch him uh, become world champion um, which is fantastic so uh, as I said I thought I'd mention this float again it's in it's in the um, manual and it's on the website so you know uh, you can go over and, uh, and check it out um, okay right um, I may have made a mistake. I, I, uh, it's 1982 that Kevin <laughs> won the World uh, Championships. Yeah, that was um, after the uh, Ludic and the following year was in Ireland, and that's when he used that float. So there we are. Um, right, I'm going to show you another float as well, which is um, not a pear shape, but it's um, I call it a max stick float. Basically, it's a very very small float indeed, balsa shaped, um, almost like a max stick, very very light, and. Um, this particular float you can use on still water canals uh, and with a bit of flow but you can also use it on a river and uh, the reason we use on a river um, many years ago uh, I was fishing uh, the Warwick Raven and there was um, I was getting uh, uh, you know bit out on the way down and I tried a shallow waggler and didn't work and so then um, I thought right it looks as though these fish are feeding right on the surface you know just an inch or two under the surface so I thought right what I'll do I'll get a, one of these little matchsticks floats um, very little sh uh, shots down you know a couple of number 12s and I would you know basically try and catch them on the surface and it worked a treat I was catching dace as well as bleak I also had the odd chub as well and if you can see that diagram that's how it's used with a pole and you just hold it on the surface as it's, as it's, you know, flowing, and you get those fish. Again, it's in the, you know, it's on the website or it's in the catalog, so you know you can go and have a look. So uh, I thought I'd just quickly uh, throw that one in uh, before we go on to the pear shapes. Okay, as I mentioned, there are absolutely dozens and dozens of different pear shapes, and each one uh, basically uh, have a, has a job to do. Um, I've got them illustrated in the in the catalogue, and um, I tried to cover as much as I can, as I say, you know, through the uh, on the website and and through the manual. Um, but as I say, um, so many different variations, and um, as I say, the first one I'll, I'll talk about is the basic, you know, still water pear shape. And this float is ideal if you're fishing, um, you know, sort of anywhere, any uh, canal, um, any lake, still water. Um, and basically, uh, as I mentioned, you know, with a shotting pattern, it's usually a bulk down and then a, um, a few uh, droppers below that. Um, and it's a great, you know, it's, that's the, the basic start of the pear shape. All right, let me tell you a little bit about the still water pear uh, uh, float because it's perhaps uh, the most popular uh, shaped float for still water fishing. Um, and this is particularly true on you know canals, lakes, um, and uh, any sort of uh, still water. Um, the shape of the float, you know, as I said, you can hold against the wind drift, and at the same time, can be very very sensitive, you know, to um, shy biting fish. Uh, developed many years ago this float um, with elder pith and um, uh, this was long before balsa became popular. Now elder pith was um, easy to shape and it was very buoyant um, and uh, they used to use cane tips and uh, bases and this was the forerunner of the pole floats. Now um, obviously these day, this day and age they're made with balsa or polystyrene and the, um, the pear shaped body comes in many shapes and sizes you know round elongated squat um, and the bristles um, stems can be made of nylon cane wire glass um, and also the base uh, carbon piano wire uh, nylon cane and glass now fishing line uh, as i say these days are of excellent quality uh, very fine diameters and also some have elasticity you know uh, in the hook lengths um, which allow obviously stronger application when hooking the fish 
Um, now, I was fortunate that I was one of the first anglers to introduce these new lines onto the market in the late 1980s. Um, I was sponsored by a French company called Water Queen and um, uh, we brought a range into the country. Um, at the time, the British angler was a little sceptic all about it all, but uh, eventually, you know, this day and age, everyone now uses uh, high-tech lines, uh, which um, obviously the benefit of catching more fish, you know, um, stronger breaking strains with lower diameters. Uh, anyway, as I said, um, now, also hooks are very important. Um, you know, hooks are now uh, chemically sharpened. Uh, they're uh, super sharp and very light. And uh, as I said, they're quite um, commonplace. Uh, you have your own preferences, uh, obviously, um, depending on the type of fishing you're doing. You know, if you're bloodworm fishing, it's got to be a very fine wire, um, or you, you know, you're fishing um, maggots and casters. And then, of course, if you're fishing um, later on, when I talk about commercials, you're talking about more heavier hooks um, and more gilted hooks. Okay, so uh, that's a little rundown on the Stillwater pair. Okay, now, uh, although the reverse pair, uh, the reverse pear shape is commonly uh, mostly associated, as I said, with, with running water. Um, but there are times when this float um, works exceptionally well on still water. Uh, uh, this is when, of course, when you've got a strong flow, which is caused by the wind. You know, the need to hold back uh, is also very important, um, you know, to present a, a still bait in the water. Uh, and for many reasons, um, you know, you may have experienced where the water, uh, the surface is going that way and that underneath the toe is going the opposite direction. And this is a common uh, occurrence in a lot of still waters. Uh, in fact, when um, uh, this is something you have to observe because this is where this uh, flow can come into its own. Um, simply by holding back against the flow, the top surface, and gradually, as a little tip here, gradually moving it in the opposite way of the wind and, and the top surface can produce those few extra bites because the undercurrent uh, is going the opposite way, as I said, and that, that's um, you know, a very good uh, tip and you know for you to remember okay now um i do have a preference on the bristles on uh, still water pole floats and uh, i learned this from the french anglers um uh, for a very fine presentation uh, floats uh, which have metal bristles uh, are suspended above the water with float grease um, and in my experience uh, this is the most sensitive method of all the to produce this fish um, uh, but never underestimate, as I said, the toe uh, on a still water. Um, that's why sometimes maybe you will have to use a nylon or a cane uh, bristle. As I said, I, 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 I have caught, believe this or not, as far as two to three meters um, from the opposite way where the bait's gone in, where you imagine the top surface is taking the bait that way. In fact, as I say, it's actually going the other way. So, you know, it's very, very important. That you uh, that you learn that little tip. Yeah. So uh, as I say, um, a little shot in, little trick with a shot and pattern on that is to uh, with a bug to lay the shots on the bottom as well, because that will help to uh, slow up, uh, if you like, um, uh, the drift of the, of the bait. Um, I can remember uh, many years ago fishing a, a match um, on Mallory Park. It was an invitation match. And uh, never get. I was I drew next to Keith Arthur, <laughs> and um, I used one of these floats then. Uh, and the the wind, which produced a little toe on the lake, um, you know, I managed to overcome this by, uh, as I said, using this float, um, and uh, gradually helping it go the opposite way, pulling it uh, against the wind, and uh, ended up with fourteen pound of skimmers. And um, I had the best, and uh, I beaten Keith Arthur, obviously, <laughs> but uh, I, I actually had the um, the best small uh, skimmer weight uh, in the competition. Uh, the only people to beat me were uh, were people who called carp that day. But as I say, fantastic float um, when you get a very when you get a strong drift and you want the bait to go the opposite way to the top surface. Um, just to show you a couple of uh, diagrams. Okay, again, in the manual. 
Okay, now I'm going to show you uh, the elongated pair. Now the elongated pair takes on a, a longer drop uh, than the, the shorter pair drop. Uh, and this gives an extra dimension to the tapering of the float. Uh, you, have, you have one there, for example. Okay, now, um, originally uh, designed uh, for light on the drop presentation with the Olivet down. And the weight of the Olivet, of course, sets the float quite immediately, which then gives you a long drop from uh, the base, uh, the tip of the float up to the bristle. And this gives you the, uh, if you like, the, the, the long drop slow presentation. Uh, this works uh, exceptionally well when fishing just off the bottom, you know, and a third down the depth of the swim. Um, blood room fishing in particular, you know, it does work very well. Um, and, you know, and of course, when, uh, when you need to uh, have the presentation for the bait uh, to be um, a, a slow drop near the bottom, then this float really comes into its own. Uh, the long bristle helps uh, uh, to detect, you know, as I say, um, uh, slow bait presentation on, with lift bites and obviously sail away bites. Uh, nylon uh, or cane tips are best. Um, sometimes you can grease the line uh, to help give that uh, little bit of uh, um, uh, buoyancy and um, again uh, it's a sort of um, a long uh, it's a slow drop presentation uh, Fish and a Joke has always been good uh, well years ago when where Blood Room and Joke was allowed and this was a great float um, uh, you know now I was exceptionally lucky one year to have actually um, uh, fished and uh, I won the uh, Ascendridge British Sundridge Pole Championships on the Regent's Canal um, in London and um, I won the first prize of uh, £3,000 which was a record amount of money at the time um, you know in any competition uh, you know talking uh, 30 years ago now and um, and as I say using uh, the knowledge I picked up from the continental anglers and this float uh, helped me uh, win I, well uh, £6.5 ounces uh, and I never forget um, uh, yeah, beating a, a local lad, Johnny Mac, uh, by just a few ounces. And uh, as I say, that all the money was on the major uh, winner, and, that, um, and, the sec and Johnny was second, and I think he had 50 or 60 quid uh, pool money. So it was a big difference. But as I said, that float helped me uh, to win that, as I said, with a very slow drop presentation. Um, in fact, there's another float um, very similar to this that um, I'll be talking about in a minute, where I... Uh, won uh, the second day world championships in Hungary um, but that's uh, another float I'll talk about now in a minute as I said um, uh, the elongated pair does come in various uh, sizes you know from everything from uh, you know four eighteenths to uh, three grams um, you know and it also you know depends on the type of venue um, where you're fishing you know obviously to the the, sh uh, the shape and the size of the float I'll uh, just uh, show you the extra you know, diagram. Okay, as I said, it's all in the manual, all on the website. Okay, right, now I'm going to show you the float that uh, I just mentioned about um, when I won the, uh, the second day in Hungary um, in the World Championships. And... Um, it's an extra long cane tip float. There you are, I don't know if you can see that. As you see, it's extra long. Um, now, the World Championships in Hungary in 1992, it was held on a rowing course, um, and the depth, average depth is about seven foot. Uh, the species included roach, rudd, skimmers, carp, bleak, perch, and um, small chub. Uh, there was also um, uh, a mixture of uh, other type of fish, which were uh, uh, like a, a, a zimba, but they call it a vimba, vimba. Anyway, uh, I never forget, um, it was during our practice when um, we were fishing and Trabuco from the Italian team came along and uh, you noticed we had abundance of casters. Well, of course, in them days, our maggots and our bait um, was exceptionally good compared with the, a lot of the... Uh, the, um, the foreign teams. Anyway, Trabuco, um, he gave me a bunch of these floats and we swapped him for a, ba a bag of casters, which I thought was a bargain. Anyway, 
This float then went on to win me many prizes. And in fact, um, I used this um, on the second day and uh, it caught me, um, uh, let me see, caught me quite a lot of fish. Uh, that uh, that weekend, by the way, uh, on the Saturday, I didn't do uh, particularly well because uh, our team tactic was to fish a whip for perch and uh, it didn't materialize. But the second day, we were left uh, on our own devices and uh, and I used this float. And um, uh, th that year, Bob Ned won, uh, won it as well, funny enough, uh, the World Champs over the two days. Um, as I say, uh, I'll show you the, uh, uh, the shot in pattern on this one now. Okay. Now, if you look at this, um, the depth there is, uh, uh, let's have a look, that's, uh, yeah, seven foot. The halfway along, about three and a half foot, I put the Olivet. And the other half, the other three and a half foot, is the long drop, a very light drop. So basically, when you um, loose feed in uh, over the float, and you lay the float on the water, then this tail, half of the, uh, of the line, starts to fall through the water as natural and as slow um, as you can, creating a natural presentation. And that will pick up fish on all levels in the water. Um, as I say, it, uh, it's a fantastic method, and a fantastic float. So that's another float that, uh, you know, to look out for. Okay, the next um, float I'm going to show you is what we call the long oval pole float. Okay, it comes in uh, different sizes, of course. Now, the long oval uh, float um, is recognised normally as more of a whip float than anything else, but uh, it does work equally as well on uh, a pole, you know, breaking down. Um, the nature of the float uh, lends, it, lends itself to be very sensitive, and you can either have a wire uh, bristle, um, or you can have a cane bristle or a nylon bristle. And uh, as I say, you can have carbon stems, glass stems, and or wire stems. So, you know, you've got a bit of a variety there. Now, the secret with these is um, is uh, weighting the floats um, in such a, a way that um, you, you put an even uh, spread of uh, shots down the line um, because then uh, it, this can uh, produce a natural presentation of the bait. Um, I remember fishing in the Winter League uh, on the Ken Navan Canal uh, one year, and um, uh, I was catching reasonably well, you know, uh, on this float, you know, breaking down. Um, yet um, I knew that uh, I had to speed my catch rate up, and uh, I thought, well, the only way I can do it really is to like fish a ball, um, you know, to hand. So what I done, I just had uh, simply added extra line uh, to this float, so it become almost uh, like a long pole, like a long whip. Uh, and helped me, uh, I had over 300 fish and it gave me 17 pound and um, bear in mind it's over 100 peg and I come third, you know, as I said, um, using this float. Um, also, on the bigger variety of these floats as well, these oval floats, uh, we used to use them in Ireland and, um, you know, the, the big uh, four, you know, three, four, five gram floats and these were perfect for, you know, as I said, fishing um, to hand on long pole to hand. Um, in Ireland, uh, for example, uh, I fished on the river Blackwater uh, in a festival competition and, uh, and uh, the first day I had 142 pound of roach and the second day 136 pound of roach using this float, as I said, um, to hand. Um, another time I, uh, I done well with this float was in um, fishing uh, in Southern Ireland on the, um, uh, the Boyle Festival. Uh, 1989, yeah, I used them, as I say, one of these longer, larger ones, um, float the hand, uh, and I, I won the festival over the two days, so, uh, yeah, as I say, it's a brilliant float, um, you know, the, the larger variety, obviously, on bigger waters, and the small variety on the smaller waters. Yeah, so I thought I'd just show you the shopping pattern on that, reducing in size and the various um, sizes. Okay, and the next uh, float I'm going to show you is um, it's an extra wide base float. Um, basically, uh, a, a squatter body. And the reason why when we use these floats, 
uh, is usually to help um, stabilize the presentation in a, a bit of a choppy water. Um, you fish it with a bug down um, and you, obviously small droppers and you can use these on canals and any still water. Uh, other factors uh, that determine the float stability in the water is the, um, the, um, the stem which uh, uh, usually a heavy stem such as wire um, you know that helps to stabilize it in the water and it's sort of semi half cocked if you like when when you uh, uh, you know when you put it into the water uh, so there's less shot going down um, yeah, just a little warning the wire stems can easily be bent when you move it up and down so move it you know very slowly you know with the silicone rubbers um, as I say, carbon is a, is a new material that you can use, that the people use, uh, which is strong and it's less likely to bend uh, and it's relatively light as well. So it means you actually can add extra weight down on this particular float. Um, again, this one uh, ideal for, um, uh, you know, as I said, for moving choppy waters, uh, stabilizes because of the lower uh, base, um, you know, design on, on the actual float itself. Okay, again, you can uh, use this uh, to hand as well, as well as um, a breaking down pole. Yeah, I'll show you a diagram now. There you go. So you got your bulk down, and you got your droppers, and there's your float. Okay, again, it's in the manual or on the website.